The late Eocene Epoch. Most of the marine reptiles of the Mesozoic have been wiped out, and the end of their reign led to a power vacuum that needed to be filled. Mammals in particular were well adapted to many different biomes across the globe. Being one of the few to survive the mass extinction, mammals quickly dominated almost all available niches on land, and once they began to rule the land, one particular group began to conquer the waves. In the vacancy left behind by the long gone Mosasaurus, one animal grew larger than all the others, occupying the throne once held by the mighty reptiles. Not just a cane of the prehistoric seas, this was Basilosaurus, the Emperor of the Eocene Ocean. The story of Basilosaurus begins in 1832, when a single fossilized vertebra was discovered in the Yazoo Clay Fossil Formation located in northern Louisiana. A single backbone would later be sent to the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia. Paleontologist, anatomist, and physician Richard Harlan would later publish the vertebra in a brief report, giving the genus name Basilosaurus, meaning cane lizard or reptile. By this time, the genus lacked the type species name. John Gates Cree, a judge in Clark County, Alabama, discovered additional material and brought them to Harlan. The remains consisted of jaws, teeth, and other postcranial remains and were brought to England in 1839. Sir Richard Owen, the man who actually coined the term dinosaur, would examine the new material. He concluded that the remains belonged to a mammal, not a reptile as it was originally suggested, due to the presence of double-rooted heterodont teeth, which is what mammals typically would have that reptile teeth lack. Sir Owen suggested that redescribing the material as a new genus and species named Zuglodon cetoides. However, the original genus name was kept, giving it the type species Basilosaurus cetoides, meaning whale-shaped cane lizard or reptile. Since the official naming for the type species of Basilosaurus, even more specimens for Basilosaurus cetoides would be found nearly throughout all of the southeast United States. About half a century later, unnamed whale fossils in the eastern Sahara began to be recognized by paleontologists in the late 1800s. A few remains in particular wouldn't receive attention until the early 1900s when paleontologists Hugh Beadnell and Charles William Andrews described and named a second species of Basilosaurus in 1904 named Basilosaurus isis, meaning throned cane lizard or reptile. The new species was formerly named Zuglodon Isis in an attempt to keep the already synonymized genus. The material for Basilosaurus Isis that was found, which consisted of a mandible and several vertebra, were discovered in the world famous Wadi Al Hitan fossil group in Egypt, renowned for having many other different types of early whale fossils. The discovery for Basilosaurus Isis shows paleontologists that the genus itself had Atlantic wide range, as this species lived in a now receding ancient Tethy Sea with additional remains for the same species being found as far as Morocco to as far east as Jordan. However, as of today, we now know that Basilosaurus was a cosmopolitan genus, with even more specimens from currently unnamed species being as found north as Poland and Ukraine to as far south as Peru and Antarctica. This wide geographic range shows that Basilosaurus thrived and adapted in many different environments all across the world's seas. Basilosaurus was one of the largest marine animals to have ever existed on Earth during this time. The first animal of its size to be seen since the Mosasaurs and Elasmosaurus plesiosaurs that went extinct at the end of the Mesozoic. While the overall anatomy for both Basilosaurus species are similar to each other, the only real difference between the two is the overall length of the torso and dorsal ridges. Basilosaurus isis, according to a 2019 study, is believed to have measured 15 to 18 meters or 49 to 59 feet in length and it would have weighed around 6.5 metric tons. This is incredibly slim for a whale of this size, and the similarly sized sperm whale coming in at 59 feet as well, but weighing upwards of 53 metric tons. The same goes for Basilosaurus cetoides, which is actually far longer than Basilosaurus isis in terms of body length. With its longer torso and dorsal ridges, Basilosaurus cetoides, also as of 2019, 
is believed to have reached a body length of 17 to 20 meters or 56 to 66 feet in length, and of what weighed around 5.8 metric tons. While these whales were not incredibly massive, like the giant whales we know today, the relatives could actually get much, much larger. Basilosaurus is the surname for a family of early whales known as Basilosauridae. Basilosaurus were the first early oceanic whales and are the only fully aquatic whales to be a part of the Archaeoceti parv order, which contains more semi-aquatic and fully terrestrial ancestors. Despite being fully aquatic, however, Basilosaurids retain their hind limbs, a vestige from when their ancestors walked on land, which their future descendants would lose. This, along with other anatomical features, including separate nostrils and heterodont dentition, goes to show just how primitive Basilosaurids were. Since Basilosaurids were the first of their kind to be fully aquatic, these early whales diversified rapidly when they first appeared in the fossil record during the Lutetian stage of the Middle Eocene Epoch, 43 million years ago, splitting into three separate subfamilies that obtained different ecological niches all across the globe. Dorodontinae was the first subfamily to appear, and like most dolphins today, they had a diet of fish and mollusks respectfully. In addition to this, they typically made up the smaller members within Basilosauridae, such as the likes of Dordon itself, Zygoriza, and Ocasigia. Pachycetinae, not to be confused with the terrestrial Pachycetus, first appeared 41 million years ago. They obtained more stout bodies due to their dense bones, which suggests that they were slow, shallow sea hunters and scavengers, feeding on anything they could find on the seafloor. This kind of lifestyle is similar to modern day dugongs and manatees, and this behavior has been suggested for the recently described Parasitus another member of Pachycetinae, whose bones were so dense that scientists believe that it could have rivaled even the blue whale in terms of mass. Basilosaurus itself belongs to the aptly named Basilosaurinae subfamily, which appeared 42 million years ago. Basilosaurus, along with the other Basilosaurines like Basilotritus and Basilotaris, would serve as apex predators of their environment feed on any large animals they could find. This includes a smaller Dorodontines. Along with the Dorodontes and other close relatives, both species of Basilosaurus, along with the other currently unnamed species, would have lived alongside a myriad of different animals across the world, serving as either prey or in some cases, even as competition. Yes, even the mighty King Lizard was not the only monster swimming in these seas. Basilosaurus, like the rest of its kind, were predators that are believed to have hunted near the surface of the oceans or in shallow seas overall and usually avoided deeper waters. Stomach contents from the North American species, Basilosaurus cetoides, are shown to have had a diet of fish and large sharks like Galeocerno alabamensis, an extinct relative of the tiger shark. Stomach contents from Basilosaurus isis are also known, showing that it had a more carnivorous diet, with remains small as fish like Pycnotus, to as large as small whales like mature Dorodon. Other potential prey items for isis would have likely included fish like Encodus and other mammals like Protosiren and Myrotherium. While there isn't much data to go off of what the Peruvian species may have eaten, it would have potentially gone after small Dordontes like Okusagia and Supiacetus. The unnamed Antarctic species possibly preyed on fish, sharks, and early penguins like Anthropornis. Unfortunately, there isn't much of a fossil record to determine what the unnamed European species may have preyed on other than Striatolamia, an extinct shark. Additionally, it would have likely gone after larger prey items on rare occasions, such as a marine snake, Terrace Fenis. As for competition, Cetoides, Isis, as well as the currently unnamed Peruvian and Antarctic species faced a plenty of competition, most of which were other basilosaurids like Cynthiacetus, Zygoriza, and potentially Dorodon serratus, and Chrysocetus for Basilosaurus Cetoides, and Basilotaris and Masrocetus for Basilosaurus Isis. The unnamed Peruvian species also potentially competed with Cynthiacetus, and the Antarctic species potentially competed with Zygoriza and Lonicetus, one of the earliest ancestors of baleen whales. The biggest competition for Basilosaurus, including the European species, would have been the giant sea snake, Paleophis. Paleophis is known for many different species, and while smaller species could have been served as prey, bigger species grew so large that they may have been served as a threat to younger Basilosaurus individuals. Paleophis colossius, being the largest species, 
reached a maximum of 12.3 meters or 40 feet in length, rivaling even the Titanoboa in overall size. In fact, this makes Paleophis the single largest marine reptile since the Bosasaurus and Pusiosaurus went extinct 66 million years ago. Aside from the multitude of different fauna that Basilosaurus lived with, Basilosaurus would have also lived in environments dominated by different seagrass genres such as Thalassodendron, Haliduol, and Thalassia, otherwise known as turtle grass. These seagrasses were important due to the semi-aquatic marine life Basilosaurus preyed on, and these types of environments would have been likely used as nurseries or hunting grass for other prey items. Basilosaurus as an animal has made quite a few appearances in media since its initial discovery. The first appearance of Basilosaurus in media was actually in the 1851 novel Moby Dick, or was mentioned by the main character Ishmael as a possible whale. Basilosaurus then made its initial on footage debut in the 2001 BBC documentary series Walking with Prehistoric Beasts, in the second episode Whale Killer, where a pregnant female was depicted attempting to search for food to ensure that her unborn offspring would survive. Basilosaurus returned for the 2003 spin-off series, Chased by Sea Monsters, appearing in the second episode, Into the Jaws of Death. And in its next appearance, it was in the 2009 series by National Geographic, called Morph. After this, it then appeared in the 2014 documentary series, History of Life, in the second episode, The Landing, and the 2019 series, When Widows Walked, Journeys in Deep Time. Basilosaurus also made several game appearances including Jurassic Park Builder, The Ocean Hunter, Ark Survival Evolved, Feed and Grow Fish, The Hungry Shark Series, and Wildlife Park 2. Despite an incredibly successful rule as one of the ocean's first large predators since the extinction of the great marine reptiles at the end of the Mesozoic, the ring of Basilosaurus eventually did come to an end. Both species, Cetoides and Isis, met their end around 33.9 million years ago, towards the end of the Eocene Epoch. In addition to Basilosaurus, most of its closer relatives such as the Dorodontidae and Pachycidinae both went extinct around this time. Scientists believe the extinction of these ancient whales and Basilosaurus itself may have been due in part to the temperature of the oceans dropping quite drastically as a result of climate change in the late Eocene Epoch. This global cooling would kill off most of the more basal whales, but leaving in their place, new whales more adapted to live in these cold environments. Whales that will one day become the largest animals to ever live on planet Earth. And while many of these whales today are still great and terrifying predators of the ocean, none can truly compare to Basilosaurus, the emperor of the Eocene Oceans. Thank you guys for watching today's video. We put a lot of work into this one and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Today's video was directed by the Primal Earth, narrated by myself, the Imperpetuate Sabretooth. It was scripted by the Primal Earth and Spine and Dragon Productions, edited by Legit Eliminator, the Primal Earth and Spine and Dragon Productions, and the graphic designer for this video was the Dazzler Hunter, creating a thumbnail, size animation, and the outro animation playing right now. And lastly, the research team was Spine and Dragon Productions. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.